Make the beep. Make the beep. It made the beep. All right. Now, we are going to be doing some drawing as well as math here because part of math, believe it or not, is understanding what you are dealing with. Spatial awareness is just as important a skill in the math world as number awareness is. But this is not an art class, okay? You're never gonna get graded on your drawing. You with me? But I do expect you to be able to represent shapes on, represent three-dimensional shapes on two-dimensional paper. Everybody good? Okay, so first thing I wanna do is draw and calculate the surface area of a cereal box. Cereal box a rectangle, yeah? On the front, and then it makes a prism. How, why, why is it a prism? Something has to go inside, excellent. So we need three dimensions, don't we? Right, because you can't put nothing inside a two-dimensional thing. So we gotta make a three-dimensional thing, but we can't actually make a three-dimensional thing on two-dimensional paper, can we? So we have to draw it and we represent it with diagonal drawings, which we all know. So this shape, this rectangular prism is that green rectangle Stacked on itself how many times? An infinite amount of times, yes? Because technically, that green rectangle has no depth. Is everybody with me on this? All right. Now, I am asking you for the surface area of the cereal box. Right up here, I remind you, because you should have done some of this in grade nine, this easy stuff, this should be review for all of you. Surface area is the total exposed area of a solid. What do I mean by exposed area of a solid? Say it out loud, don't be a wuss. What you can see? So when I hold up this book, what is the surface that you can see? Exactly, so let's refine our definition. So. Rihanna says this is what you can see. So by that definition, for Rihanna, this is the surface area, because that's all she can see, yes? Right? I'm not putting you down. I'm just saying we have to refine our definition. If I were to ask Sam what the surface area is, he'd say this, if we were going by what you can see. So let's refine it. Is it what you can see? Yes or no? No, it isn't. So let's fix it up. What is exposed area of this solid? Pretend that this is all solid. Pretend it's, yeah? On the outside, right? Is there a surface inside? Yeah, but it doesn't count. Why? Right, because this is the, thank you. This is a solid, so... We're only caring about the outside of it, yes? I like to remember it as what would happen if it was dipped in paint. So if I dip that cereal box in paint, that's going to get covered. And that's going to get covered, isn't it? But how many green sides are there to get covered? Two. Two. How many blue sides? Two. How many yellow sides? Two. So really what I have there is all that area times two, yes? And of course that gives us a formula because what shape is that green thing? What is it? Rectangle, right? What's the area of a rectangle? Length times width. And how many of them are there? Two, excellent. So there's the green length times width, yes? Okay. And then there's the blue length times width, yes? 
And then there's the yellow. Damn it. The yellow length times width, right? And what do I got to do with those three numbers? Add them up and multiply them by two. Everybody cool? Easy peasy lemon squeezy. Now the problem with this is that's what's happening. But you guys are like, I need the formula. What's the formula? Give me the formula. And if you look on your sheet, I did give you the formula. The formula doesn't look like that. It looks like this. 2LW plus WH plus LH. What do those stand for? Length, width, and height, right? Who decides what the length, width, and height are? Who gets to make that decision? The person drawing the object. Because if I lie it down, the length, width, and height are going to change, aren't they? Right? If you look on your drawing on your chart, which I gave you, it looks like this. Right here. It says this is the length, this is the width, and this is the height. Which is fine if the cereal box is lying on the ground, yes? That looks like a cereal box lying on the ground. But I don't know about you guys. I don't put my cereal in the, clock, in the cupboard like that. How do I put my cereal in the cupboard? Like that. So length, width, and height change, doesn't it? But since I'm multiplying, does it matter? No. But the problem that you guys have and the mistakes that you will make if you only memorize formulas is you're going to make errors in what is happening here. Here are some of the mistakes you're going to make. One of the things you're going to do is you're not going to add there. You're going to do length times width times W times H times L times H. And you're going to get a gigantic number. And when you do all that multiplying, you're going to do it on your calculator, aren't you? Right? So your calculator is going to give you an answer, right? And you all know how to work your calculator. And then you're going to write down that answer. And is that answer going to make any sense? No, because it's going to be a gigantic number. But some of you, even though I'm doing this right now, are still going to do that. Mostly because you don't want to write down any work. If you write down the work, is it possible to do this wrong? No, it's not. One of these numbers is L, one is W, one is H. Does it matter which? No, but you can do something that makes sense, right? If you decide that this is H, this is W, and this is L, then all you got to do is write it out. And then you cannot do this unit wrong. You can't get it wrong. It's impossible because we give you a formula and we give you pictures. So which one of these makes sense to make it W. Hmm? What one makes sense to be W? You got 8, 24, and 40. I said W is right here, like the picture. It's the shortest one. So it makes sense to make it 8, the way I drew it. What if you drew it differently? Would it matter? No. You could choose, right? So for me, it makes sense that this is my W. Now what does it make sense for L? I got this long one and I got this one. You guys know what a cereal box looks like. There's my L. What should I make it? 24 or 40? 24, the way I drew it. And that makes that H, yes? Now, is it possible to get it wrong? It really isn't, is it? Two, what's L? 24, what's W? Eight. Plus, what's W? Eight, H, 40. Plus, what's L? 24, what's H? 40. Now comes the problem. This is where you guys get into trouble. A great many of you don't know how to use your calculator properly. Tell me what the surface area of this thing is. You've all got a calculator. If you don't have a calculator, you have your phone. If you don't want to use your phone and you don't want to use your calculator, you can do this math in your head. Do the math in your head. Aaron. 1984. 1984? 
Does everybody else have that? I don't have my calculator out, and I don't remember the answer. So I need some corroboration of Aaron's evidence. But just for fun, uh, 24 times 8 is 160, and 32 is 192. 8 times 40 is 320. 24 times 40 is 480. Uh, 480 and 320 is 800, and 192 is 992. So 2 times 992 is 1984. I did that all in my head. Lexi, what'd you get? Oops. Plus 24 times 40. Okay. Nobody else did it? Because I only got two answers here. And there's 30 of you. Oh, that's why. I did 480 there. That's 960. That's why mine didn't work. So 960 and 320. Yeah, it's probably closer to 2944. 2944 what? Centimeters. Centimeters squared. Why is it centimeters squared? Because it's surface area, and area has how many dimensions? Two. So it has to be squared. Now, the question becomes, again, if you didn't actually do this, or I lie, because all of you should have done it. If you didn't actually tell me your answer, and you didn't get that, then you need to work on your calculator skills not your math skills. Does everybody understand the difference? You got to learn how your calculator works. Now you can punch this all in in one go. But that takes quite a bit of calculator practice. If you write it out, then it doesn't. Okay? I stress this to you. Please, show work. All right. Let's go to page 28. This is the hardest single shape surface area question I can give you. It is the hardest. Draw and calculate surface area of a rectangular pyramid with that base and that height. So if it's a rectangular pyramid with that base, how big is that rectangle that's on the bottom? How long is this side? Just give me the length of the side first. 32. And that makes that 48, yes? Okay. So that's the bottom, right? What is the rest of this pyramid made up of? What shape is that? Triangle. What shape is that? Triangle. How many of those yellow triangles are there? How many of those green triangles are there? Excellent. Okay. Now, if I'm going to find, so I know in my head that a pyramid is a rectangle plus two triangles on one side plus two triangles on the second side, yes? And I've colored them yellow 
and green. Is everybody cool with what I have done? Everybody understand? How do I find the area of a rectangle? We know it's length times width. How do I find the area of a triangle? Do you remember? Base times height divided by two. Right. Base times height divided by two. Base times height divided by two. But how many triangles are there? Two. So what happens to those? They cancel each other out. So I have the length times width from the base. I have plus the base times height. Wait for this to unfreeze. The base times height for one side, or I lie, sorry, for two sides. And then I have what's happening over here. Is it the same base and height? It's the same height, but a different base, isn't it? And they cancel. So I get the base times height of the other two sides. Is everybody cool? Now, this is where kids get messed up. When I say the height of a pyramid, what do I mean? From the base to the tip. Okay. A straight line. Excellent. Where, Jazreet? Getting a text from my buddy who's a surfer. Whoa, gnarly. What's he texting me? That's weird because I already put my phone on silent today. Oh. Nice. Okay. So, Jazzerite is absolutely right. The height of a pyramid is in the middle, yes? But is surface area in the middle? No, surface area needs to be on the outside, yeah? So, I don't need the height of the pyramid. I need this distance down the side, yes? How do I find that? Noah? Pardon? Okay. Aaron? Yeah. Yep. 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 What shape is that? A right angle triangle. Do I know how to find the edges? This side 65. How long is this side? Look closer. Because everybody says it's 32. Is it 32? What is it? That line goes to the middle of the pyramid, doesn't it? So what is this? From the middle of the pyramid out to the side. 16. So one, my green triangle, how long is this side? Well... It's 65 squared plus 16 squared. Then I square root it because I do Pythagoras, yes? Okay. How do I do my yellow triangle? My yellow triangle is still 65 squared, yeah? But what's this side of it? Is it 16 again? It's 24. And then I square root that. Now I'm in business, yes? Do I have all the numbers I need? I do, don't I? But it's a lot of work, isn't it? What goes in for length and width on the base of the triangle? 
32 times what? 48. Nicely done. Plus, base times height. What's the base of the yellow triangle? Thirty-two. And what's the height? We got it right up here, don't we? As soon as my computer unfreezes, we got it right here, yes? The square root of 65 squared plus 24 squared. What's the base of the green triangle? 48. And the height is the square root of 65 squared plus 16 squared. Who thinks they can punch all that into their calculator in one go? Think you can? Okay. How many people think that that would be difficult to punch all into their calculator in one go? So what do you do instead, What? You just do piece by piece, don't you? And you still can't get it wrong, can you? I would do these guys first and then write the number right there. Then multiply by 32. Then this guy. Multiply by 48. Then that and then add it all up. But it's not that hard to do, right? Was there anything new in this question? Did you already know Pythagoras? A squared, B squared, C squared. Did you already know this? Of course you did. You learned it in grade seven-ish, right? Did you already know the area of a rectangle? Sure, you learned that in grade five. Did you already know the area of a triangle? Sure, you learned that in grade five. What if you forget those areas? Does it matter? No, why? Because what do I give you? All the formulas. Everybody with me? Later in the class, you're going to work that out, and then we're going to come back and you're going to see the right answer. I want to make sure everybody can work their calculators. And I do apologize. That is the hardest question I can give you. Let's look at this next one. A cone. All right, a cone looks like this. What's that shape on the bottom? Circle. What's the area of a circle? Who remembers? Anyone remember? If you don't remember, where do you find it? On the sheet in front of you. Because a, a cone is a circle plus, believe it or not, it's actually a piece of, a piece of the circle. That's what makes a cone. So you guys are smart kids. The area of the circle right off your sheet is pi r squared, yes? Right? And this part, we give it to you as a gift. It's pi and r because it's part of a circle, yes? But it's not r squared. You multiply it by the s. And that is right here, the slant height. So we read our question. Radius is 15. There's my r. Height is 22. Height equals 22. Do I need the height in my question? Is height anywhere in that formula? What is in that formula? R and a slant height, yes? My slant height is here, correct? So I got to do my good friend Pythagoras again. What's the height? Read the question. What's the height of this cone? 22. What's the radius? 15. So now I have this triangle, 22 and 15, and I need this side. So in my notes, I'm going to write down right now, slant height means using 
Pythagoras. And a great many of you don't know what Pythagoras is, so I'll write it out as a squared plus b squared equals c squared. If you need a slant height, you got to do that. So how do we do it? 22 squared plus 15 squared, and then we square root the answer. And that will give me my slant height. Once I have my slant height, can I do this question? Yes, I can. We're going to move on. You're going to come back and do it in a minute. Okay? I'll let you get that, what we have written down there, down. And then you're going to come back and you're going to do that in a minute. Because class is almost over, I think. 10 10 this year? Something like that. I want to do one more question, I think. Yep, one more question, then you guys are going to go back to work. A pop can is what shape? Cylinder. Circle on top, sides, circle on the bottom, right? So what are the surfaces that make up a cylinder? How many circles? Two. So I got two circles. And what's the shape that makes up the middle of it? And a rectangle, right? Circles, we know what they are. They're pi r squared, right? So 2 pi r squared plus a rectangle. What is a rectangle? It's length times width, right? <clears throat> right? So where on this pop can, because a pop can stands straight up like this, right? What would you say is the height of the pop can if I was putting it on the rectangle? Is it the length or the width? Okay, so the length of this is the height of the pop can. Everyone agree? Okay, so I must have to multiply by h. How do I get the width? How do I get this part of the triangle, of the rectangle? It's not the diameter, it's the circumference, right? So length times width, it's really the height times the circumference. But what's wrong with calling this the height? Why is that not okay? Because of what we talked about yesterday. If I call it the height, but I don't know what I'm really talking about, what's wrong with that? Pardon me? The can could be lying down like this, yes? Now what's the height? It's still this. Picking up what I'm putting down? Everybody understand? We call it the height because we're used to seeing cylinders standing like this, yes? Everybody with me? So I still got to find the circumference. Who remembers how to find a circumference? Circumference equals pi times the diameter, yeah? Sorry, Siri. Just relax, dumb broad. <laughs> Siri, is, Siri is so pushy. My friend makes Siri call her bestie. Or no, BB. What, what's, what's the? BFF, yeah, yeah, yeah. Siri calls her BFF. Hey, BFF. Super lame. Pi D. That's one way to do it. What else is D? It's two, not squared, times two. So circumference is also two pi r, yeah? So if that's my circumference, and it's also my width, then what do I write here? I either write two pi r, or I write pi d. Everybody cool? Yeah. Do you have to memorize that? No, because it's in your sheet. So... This one you're going to fill out. There's your H. And diameter is 10. So what's your radius if your diameter is 10? 
five. And then you're going to put that into your formula. Is everybody good? Yeah. All right. You have 10 minutes left. I want to make sure we have these answers right. You know what you're doing with your calculators. Okay. Tomorrow, Friday, you got no homework tonight because this is heavy stuff. It's not easy. I, it's not difficult, but it's a lot of work, isn't it? Right? It's like building a house. Everybody can hammer nails, but when you've hammered in 15,000 nails, you're tired, right? Same thing here. So I'm not going to give any work tonight, but I want you to make sure you have these four questions correct. Everybody good? So we already did the first one. That's great. Let's go back to this one and make sure we can do it. I'm going to pause the recording. Meanwhile, I will be working on it here, like I say, without talking. You guys work on your own now. One thing I will warn you of, ladies and gentlemen, when you are working with pi in the 10th grade, do we ever use 3.14? No, what do we use? The pi button on your calculator, or you can leave it as pi. And here is what I mean. 15 squared is 225 pi plus there's my 26.63, right? That was my slant height. Times 15 equals 399.41. 399.41 pi. Now, if I have 225 pies and 399.41 pies, what can I do with those two numbers? What am I allowed to do? Because they're both pi. If they were both x, what can I do, Noah? I can add them. So 399.4 plus 225 
gets me 624.41 pi. That is also an okay answer. As a matter of fact, that is what the answer is going to be as you go further on in math class. When we first introduced pi to you guys in grade 7, you used 3.14, didn't you? Then in grade 9, hopefully, maybe in grade 9, but definitely in grade 10, your teacher said, no more 3.14. What do we use? The pi button. Now, in grade 10, and definitely in grade 11 and 12 in future, you're not going to use a number for pi at all. You're going to leave it written as the symbol. Is everybody cool? Now, most of you, that bothers you. And if that bothers you, just go ahead and get me the number. I'm smart enough to know. So if you can't leave it like that, you're going to go 624.41, which I have right on my screen right there, yes? If I need a number, all I got to do is go times the pi button, which on my calculator is right there, and I get 1961.63. 1961.63. Now, the next question somebody always asks me is, Mr. Myers, I got 1962.74. How could that have happened? And would I mark it wrong? No, I wouldn't mark it wrong because all that happened is you rounded differently than me. Or you rounded and didn't leave it on your calculator. You see how I'm leaving it on my calculator with all the decimal places? If you round that off, it's going to give you a slightly different answer, isn't it? <clears throat> and what's more important to me, exact answers or the concept? Concept. Everybody cool with that? Yeah. All right. And then I'm going to get the very last one. Equals 2 pi 5 squared plus 2 pi 5 times 20, which equals 50 pi plus 200 pi, 250 pi. Okay, so your job, if you didn't watch this, is to make sure you watch it tonight. Okay? Tomorrow... We're going to do a little bit of work because we're going to do something a little different. And then I'm going to give you an assignment on surface area. We are spending two days on surface area because it's an easy concept, but it's difficult to put into practice. Yes? It's really easy to explain. Pick something up, dip it in paint. What's covered? The right? The outside. Until we talk about weird shapes. Okay, so this is all I want you to do tonight. Make sure you watch this video. Make sure you can get these answers. That's all you got to do. We did all the work in class. Just make sure you know what you're doing.